Happy Sunday! It's been another busy week in the world of Counter-Strike, and we're here to retake it. Before we dive into all the action, all the news and all the gossip, there's a few things to talk about in terms of promoting. Uh, first of all, memberships are active on this channel, so if you want to join, become a member, support us, and also get access to the exclusive member Q&A and any other side content that comes out a little bit early, you know where to go. And also secondly, uh, Quack has a very popular live stream, and when I say popular, it's like I don't know, twelfth biggest in Swedish language commentary or something at this point, <laughs> which I'm it's, it's a big achievement, but it's not much of a standard. But hey, he does a good job over there. And uh, if you enjoy some commentary, some casting on uh, Swedish teams, women's games, a lot of different stuff, be sure to check it out. But he also has something else to promote. So this is a pretty big one that I might even be involved with a little bit. So what is it you've got lined up for us? Um, T will remember. Over two years ago, and uh, some viewers will remember, there was a little something called uh, LPL, which was an FPL-like sort of uh, face it hub where you would play games and there was a scoring system. Some genius made the scoring system, I don't know who. Um, and uh, ever since it's, it, it basically died out, it's been begged for doing a revival, and at this point I think I can do it. So we are launching uh, Duck and Cover. Which is going to be the, which is just an amazing name for if you've ever wanted to play like an FPL style like ten man thing where you just go to go up in queue and you like you get these in house games with your friends and some strangers and like, um, it's like FPL for amateurs. If you ever want to do that, if you ever want to compete, um, I mean it's the point is to have fun. It's always going to be about having fun, but that is uh what we're doing. That's what we're doing, and uh, that's up on my Twitter right now. I'm actually going to pin that tweet to my profile, uh, so it's easier to find. And it's the links are going to be in the description. There's a Discord server and a Facebook hub, and everything is there. So, um, yeah, it's going to be some small skin prices, but the emphasis is to have fun. So, if you want to come have fun in Counter Strike, that's where you <laughs> want to be. Yes, the Duck and Cover League. I mean, I'm I'm a part of it currently. We'll see how much I actually end up playing because I don't really have that much time for playing around, being goofy, um, especially in a league where I'm going to get absolutely dunked on because I am the worst player. I think currently signed up i don't think there's anyone worse than me currently signed up oh there, um, is. there is i don't know i don't know we'll see we'll see uh, we start, start point, tomorrow start tomorrow yeah launching tomorrow we'll see how it goes i mean last time we last time we did the lpl it was mostly level 10s getting angry at people not taking the game very seriously and it was chaos so yeah we'll that's very frowned upon contrasts. so don't if you're level 10 don't do that you you gotta be chill <laughs> remember some people have like 100 hours so or a life um, yeah. <laughs> so let's get into our first topic. It's a big one. Uh, we're going to see what's new with Chengdu. It's been a weird event to follow with games starting at like four or five in the morning for me. So I've been waking up and there's already like a series done some days. I'm thinking, did I oversleep? No, never mind. It's in China, the only place that can host games too early for me. Uh, but it has been a funny like event to follow. Uh, some pretty big games, some pretty big names. And uh, a surprisingly good bracket coming out of it after the group stages were done. I really wasn't expecting that. You know, you always expect these sorts of IM events, long haul flights, teams having to deal with jet lag, some teams having just, you know, lost a major final. You expect some dodgy results. And whilst there were a couple of things that are probably not going to hold up to scrutiny, uh, it certainly has delivered in terms of the overall playoff bracket. We ended up with FaZe, Liquid, Virtus Pro G2 as our quarterfinals, um, Maus and Astralis were the teams who went straight to the semis. One of those. Not like the other. The one thing to talk about, I think, in terms of this, the uh, playoff teams. But we've got a great final lined up in Mouse Phase. It starts in about an hour for us. Obviously, we're not going to be able to watch it before the show. Uh, but we get to preview it a little bit. But let's most importantly start with this, I think. Astralis' run to the semis. Uh, they made it past... Who was it? Steel Helmet, a replacement team. Not much of an achievement, but still, they did it. Uh, they then 2 owed Phase and 2 owed Virtus Pro. All in all, if you're trying to sell the project, like talk about how great Astralis' new team can be with device calling, that's a pretty great sell, but I wasn't really convinced. Quack, were you? No. Uh, even right now, I just think this is like the token. Uh, slightly honeymoon thing, slightly like... <laughs> I mean, Astralis are going to make semis at some event pretty much every year and still be considered basically irrelevant in the tier one scene it's been like two years of this so far and i think this is one of those token token ones where they took advantage of it i mean we talked about last week how maybe the top split of this event wasn't really that competitive i mean we had um 
four major playoff teams who were here. And uh, one of them also bombed out very early in groups. So, uh, I mean, good on them. They did it. But I don't really believe that this is like some new level of form that we're going to see going forward. And I don't think you do either, unless I'm wrong. <laughs> no, not really. I think, yeah, the beating phase first up, that is probably the best time to face phase. is early in the groups when they just come back off of a big event. Mm. I think the, like, the collective adrenaline dump, like that crash after such a big event, it's not, you know, usually that sort of thing lasts a couple hours. Coming off that level of build-up, the things you've worked for, the, like, tribulations you went through just to get to that point and then finally lose... Yeah, I think that's a great time to face phase. What was not such a great time to face phase was in the playoffs, and they did. And to be fair to them, they did take their map of Ancient. But on the other two maps, Inferno, map 3 especially, they just didn't look that competitive. I think the reason we saw them be so weak on map 3 is that the map, they needed the most out of Device as a caller. And I watched the game, and even though Carrigan himself had a moment where I thought, dude, you're over-calling, calm the hell down, just commit to an execute and go. Like, we don't need this. Um, specifically, it's that round where Rops gets the Lurk up out of A. Uh, they're on an anti-eco, and everyone's at B, but Rops calls so much clear, and then he gets one deed by the player on site, and it just all falls apart because there's seven seconds left. Yeah, that round. Just didn't need to do that. You could have just left Rops to Lurk into CT and traded out the B players, but whatever. That's what I'm talking about. Carrigan had a little moment of that. Device didn't find any reads. Couldn't figure out where to put his players. And honestly, it took a lot off his game, calling when I watched him in the playoffs. Like in the groups, it didn't seem that bad. But the playoffs on the stage, he looked rough. So I wasn't really vibing with what I saw long term. I saw a, a good level from Stown. I saw Yabby have some moments. But it wasn't really promising. I think Bro's shown off some flashes, like that maybe he wasn't just some role player they're bringing in from Monty. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to take a lot more convincing before I finally commit to saying this team is going to work for any extended period of time. I think this is as good as it gets for at least six months. Yeah, I'll. Uh, I think there's an. Like, okay, so when Astralis were at their worst, we had Device not really playing that well. And he said in interviews he's not having very much fun. Now, fast forward a month later, and he's uh, someone asked him, how is it like to be in I IGL? And he's like, I'm happy again. Like, <laughs> I think he's just... I think there might be an element of, like, they're, this is a new system, and they're kind of comfortable with it, but then eventually the issues will start to come. I don't think a device is going to be a good option for a long-time IGL. Like, my hunch is that's not going to work out. Um, if it does, good on him, but, like... I, I, eventually there's going to be issues, and I think once again, like Yisrael is going to struggle to work through that, maybe Device once again will say, oh, I'm not happy right now, <laughs> and then that sort of thing. It's going to... Yeah. Yeah. I'll... Uh, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. But we have the final starting soonish. Um, yeah, 55 minutes. It's been five minutes since I said an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, mouse and face. I think... Is that is that expected? I don't know if that's expected, if I'm honest, when I went into this. I think... Uh... I had G2 making it past Mouse, I'm going to be honest. Even mm. though I do think the G2 victory in... Uh... Bloody hell, I was just there. Copenhagen was fluky and needed some external influence. I did yep. kind of think they were going to beat them at this, at this point, just because of like a, a mental edge. When I saw them line up, I was like, ah, oh, Miles might crumble here just because it's another big stage. They're not used to also traveling this much. They're not like experienced like land players from the old circuit. I think this is a great time for them to buckle again. Like they're just gonna you know, see some old demons and not quite make it through. Uh, but instead, no, they they won the three maps. Overpass wasn't as convincing as you'd maybe like it, and I think a part of that was uh I'm not sure what to put it on, actually. I can't put my finger on it, because when I was watching the game, I felt like G2 were giving it to them. It's just they couldn't quite lock it down. Like, the fact that G2 on their CT side only once bought the AWP, and the other time that Munasi had it in his hands, it was stolen from Maus in a round win, kind of bugged me. Like, I, was, I know you guys are really good with Deagles, but this is Overpass. The best map for an AWP, really. Like, you have yeah. the most options, the most comfortable spots, the most rotations to make. Why is this not a priority? So that irked me. And I think Mao's almost let it choke. But 
they did get it over the line, so fair enough, good job. Classic it is a, fat series, so it is what it is. It is a big, yeah, it's got to be a, like a confidence thing for Mouse since <clears throat> they get they get blown out in the quarterfinal there in Copenhagen and they come here and like at this point they have the record of in 2024 in three big events they were undefeated in groups but lost every single stage game uh, <laughs> up until this point. So they have that record and they're facing G2 who blew them out in the quarterfinal and then they go and win and that's like well done that's got to be a big thing for them so I think they're going in pretty psyched into this final. Um, yeah. So they've been playing well. Uh, Money C, no help. I, I I saw the stats sheet and I just thought of that. Uh, I don't know yeah. which basket player, best basketball player is because I don't watch irrelevant sports. Well, I do. I watch Counter Strike. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Sorry, you watch <laughs> Swedish football. You can't really talk about <laughs> basketball. Uh, I, I just thought about that no help meme. I think it's is it LeBron? I don't know. It's it's a LeBron, and it's a meme not because he actually has no help. It's mostly because he the excuse that's always used is that he has no help. Despite yeah. <laughs> always having help. Yeah. Uh, Manesi has no help. He is very much... Um, Nico is struggling. I think that's more the bottom line. Like, Manesi, yes, he's playing great, but maybe it's not that he's like outpacing the others. It's more that Nico is having a bit of a rough time right now, I feel like. Because uh, in these stage yeah. games, he doesn't really show up. Um, he averages, you know... He he, it's it, it feels like a rarity that he has a great game at this point in uh, in, in on G two. Yeah, on stage it seems rare because he was he's had a f- few good like group stages and this Virtus Pro game I actually did watch and his numbers like his overall rating is piss poor compared to Munasi. Uh But if you look at he's got more kills than Munasi, and if you watch the series, oh no, his KST is only sixty six percent. Damn. Yes, he's trash. No, he actually played really well. Um, that's just one of the features of HLTV rating I don't care for. Is that, you know, players who need to make solo plays, open up, have impact sometimes, you know, are not going to be doing something useful every single round. Sometimes you do die for nothing taking those risks. Um, and that's kind of what happened. Like, he had, he had a few empty rounds, and that basically made his rating terrible. But the rounds he wasn't useless in, he was very good. Uh, so I think that was a good game, but as you said, it's few and far between. It's not enough. You really yep. realistically need uh, someone else to actually step up. Uh, if Manasi's not going to be dropping Donk in Katowice numbers, you're not going to be winning events like this. So, yeah, a bit worrying that we can't seem to get form out of Hunter or Nico at this point. Like so it was, When it was just Hunter, it was like, ah, oh, you'll be a consistent playoff team. Um, and in the playoffs, you might be able to upset your way to the final. But if it's just Manasi on the big stage performing... Yeah, you're going to get eliminated like this a lot. So, yep. it's a shame. We are complaining about a team being consistently top four. Uh, man, to have that problem, most orgs would wish it was them. But when you spend that much money on players, yeah, G2 kind of expects more. So, a shame for them. I do think this final is going to be... I mean, let's just talk about the final briefly. Who have you got taking it? Let's get a prediction, a solid prediction on the, on the record. So, it'll be over uh, by the time this game comes out, I think. I'm so... I'm so torn on this, because on one hand, I think Maus are kind of like coming in hot. Um, it's like once again undefeated in group stage, beating G2, which is like clapping it back since uh, Copenhagen. And at the same time, I mean, so our friend XL, he always talks about, or always, but he made this uh, big thread once about how major champions uh, always either skip or lose the very next big event. And I was wondering, does that does this happen for like because it's fatigue? And I was wondering, like, does this happen for the runner-up as well? And yes, it's not particularly common that the runner-up in a major final wins the next big event. Um, but then again, it's also phase. They made so many finals. Um, fuck. No, I think Mouse take this one. I think they have. I, I'm gonna give the edge to Mouse on okay. this one. What do you think? Hmm. As a gambler, looking at the odds, I'd say the odds are too heavy in FaZe's favor compared to the matchup, so I'd put money on Mouse. As a thinker, uh, an observer of Counter-Strike, and all in all, a genius, um, <laughs> I'd, I'd still put money on Mouse, actually. I, I think Mouse win this. Not because of any like concrete reasons, but because of the things I saw in the games leading up to this, which is Rops hasn't been too impactful i think he's he's still doing everything right it's just to have impact you need to 
deviate more from the textbook. And I think he's he's not doing that quite right now. Like so I think he needs to take a few more risks, especially on his like apps lurks and stuff like that. I think he's just too slow activating on them. Uh I think Frozen's been a little streaky. And whilst it's nice to see big events from Brokey, I've always afraid of him in playoffs. As someone watching and rooting for his team, I'm always scared for him. Like, oh no, please no, don't do it now. Not choky. Uh, so that's kind of my feeling. I think we're going to see like a... I think Overpass needs to be picked by, uh, by Maus. I think they then need to try and avoid an Inferno Decider and get Mirage's map 3. That's kind of how I'm feeling about the map pool. Uh, an ancient yeah. pick also wouldn't do too much harm, but I'd prefer the overpass pick just because it's such a good map for Yimfat, especially on T side. Like he finds a lot of like really good spots, really good lurks, and if they can get rolling with like a first good T side, like seven, eight rounds, I think they can steamroll from there. So my pick is Maus. It does kind of need the uh, <clears throat> oh, bloody hell. The uh, phase players to not have a, an amazing series, but they haven't really been that hot as a team, even though they're making deep runs. They're just winning through veteran Naus and great calling and the occasional flash. You know, it's not consistent superstardom that's carrying them this far. So I think Maus will win this. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's a particularly convincing uh, draw. Like, I'm not saying this is going to be easy, and I I'm, I'm really wouldn't be that comfortable putting money on it. Just it's just the odds that make me feel like if you had to take a pop, take a pop at Mouse. I think this this is gonna be their seventh straight final, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seventh straight LAN final um for phase. Jesus. And it's gonna, if they lose, it's gonna be their fifth second place in a row. Um and if they win, it's their first win since since Frozen joined, I think. I think Twist was still here. Yeah, it was in China. Uh, once again, in Shanghai. So yeah, it would have been it would have been the, their first win in almost half a year. So yeah, I mean, FaZe need the win. You, I think some people would say this is sort of when Kerrigan looks in and he just really wants this win. But it's uh, it's also like fatigue. Like all of the, all of the FaZe players have been talking about it. Like Kerrigan said himself like yesterday. Like he's he's really drained at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll take Mouse for the win. I'll take Mouse for the win. Okay. Well, we're both on the Mouse side. We'll see. This will come out and it'll probably be 2-0 phase. Easy slap bash. Just not even a contest. And we look like Muppets. But I think we're probably right on that. Um, so that's kind of Chengdu. There's not too much more to talk about. Like, yeah, Liquid looks less incompetent than previously expected. But there's so many like teams in this event that just weren't expected to be competitive. That, yeah... There's not much to talk about. Like, oh, FlyQuest didn't make it to playoffs? Fuck, I'm so surprised. Like, you know, I can't... There's, there's no point having that conversation. Um, so let's move on to a little interesting segment. I see this on a lot of other, like, um, conventional sports shows. And I thought, there's a discussion I saw pop up somewhere that intrigued me, because I want to hear what you have to say about this. But I'm not going to directly ask you. Instead, I'm going to ask you to blind rank five players. Uh, from one to five, and obviously you you don't know what's coming next. That's the entire point. I'm sure you've seen this concept before, and if you haven't, I, I have. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll be surprised. So, I'm going to name Orpers, and you have to okay. rate them just on the basis of who you'd want in your team right now. Mm -hmm. So, blind ranking Orpers based on who you'd want on your team right now. The first Orper I'm going to give you is Shiro. Okay, let me just. All right, um, Shiro. So the thing is, when when you get these in football, you always get like the final one is always Cristiano Ronaldo, and then it's like, oh, I shouldn't have put whoever the fuck I put as number one. Uh, but I, I think Shiro, I think Shiro's a solid number two for me right now. Okay. Yeah. Monacy. Fuck. All right. Yeah, Monacy's right now. Yeah, I'm gonna go one for Monacy. Okay. Great. Brokey. Uh. Four. Ricky four. All right, Torshi. Five. I'd rather have. I'd. I Torshi's. Torshi's good, but I'd rather have Broken than Torshi. So now my number three is who? Zaiwu. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's probably how I rank it right now. To be honest, yeah. That's. Uh, I. I won't change anything. I'm. I'm happy with that. You're happy with Shiro two over Zaiwu. Now that's an interesting one. 
I am, yes. But I think that's also spirit are in better form, and it's that sort of thing. Mm. Um, yeah, so I'd have a tough time justifying that to my to myself, like. Yeah, but, but you're right French. now, I'd rather have Shiro than Shiro than Zaiwu. Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay, if I'm I'm putting Monis in number one partially because I I think his play style is superior. Um, he doesn't rely on the op as much as other oppers might do. He's also very well know, rounded I'm as like. Very fine with the Monisi one part. I have no problem. Oh, yeah, no, that, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that's one of the reasons I'm valuing Monisi. But uh, Zaiwu does the same thing, so maybe he should be above Shiro, who uh, perhaps isn't as um, amazing on rifles and stuff. But I think Zaiwu, as of right now, Zaiwu is like below Shiro a bit for me. Yeah, in 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 like in terms of level right now. But uh, that's also partially because Vitality have been sort of going out quite early in some events, um, earlier than you'd expect. So, while Shiro has yeah. been on Spirit, which, yeah, I mean, the Karavitsu win, all of this. Yeah, I think I'm happy with this. It's, it's, Shiro Zaiwu is very close, but, um, yeah. Okay, I'm well, I, I can't really contest anything else other than that, I'm gonna be honest. Um, there's probably someone who'd make the case with the Torshi Brokey argument that there's some change needs to happen there, but I'm not really that bothered. I do think they, those two guys... They're kind of interchangeable at this point, not in terms of how you actually fit them on a team, but just in terms of if I had to start a team and build it, like either one's not the greatest option, but fairly solid. So it's an interesting uh, little thing to talk about. But yeah, I just saw someone post some AWP rankings and I looked at them was kind of dubiously and I thought, you know what, let's get Quack's opinion on this. Let's see where he hmm. falls on the, uh, the spectrum. <laughs> not in that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I watch does, Counter-Strike, so... Yeah, he watches and talks about Counter-Strike all day. Like, what do we expect? Yeah. Why is it always so many wankers in my area with loud exhaust pipes? Like, <laughs> just just have a normal car. No one gives a fuck. Like, yeah. It's so annoying. I think I think if, if, Torji, if Torji beats Brokey today, like, somewhat conclusively, I think he, he, he passes them. But I think Torji, I don't know, Brokey, Brokey can have big games. He does have big games. And then he sort of chokes. Torji, it's more like the opposite. Like, normally he's slightly below par. And then sometimes he surprises being quite well above par. It's just if he can keep this level, then it's, he's a really good opera. But at the moment, I feel like he Brokey edges him out just because tenure and uh, s slightly better consistency. Yeah, Torshi's a player who... I mean, he's got, like, a really flair-like approach. Like a flary, a flairish. Yeah, he's got a lot of flair in his game that you don't see too much from a lot of Orpers who aren't, like, the, like, Monacy, basically. Yeah. And, well, previously Simple would have been that guy, but he's now a rifler who just doesn't play. So, I kind of like Torji as a guy. I want him to be better than he is. It's just, I can't argue with the results. Like, just because he does take more creative picks and, like, go for more risks than everyone else, doesn't mean he's better. Uh, let's put it that way. Because his rating isn't great. That's one indicator. But also, if you watch the games, you'll see him take a lot of stupid deaths. So, there's there's, a, there's pluses and minuses to Torji's game. The biggest plus being, he's not boring. I, I genuinely <laughs> think he's just not boring. I think that's always a, a big advantage in terms of making me watch you. In terms of winning events, maybe not, but... <sighs> Who cares? Who needs money? Who, cares? Who needs winning? Yeah. Um, finally, there's another big event-ish that's been going off this week. And that's the Sky Esports. Now, I say big event. Um, it's not that big. But uh, it could have been until everyone dropped out and they had to move it online, which was a whole clusterfuck we've already been through. So we're not going to rehash that. Instead, we're going to focus on a couple teams that, well, sucked ass is the best way to put it. Because some of them really did at this event. And the first one that kind of disappointed me was big. It was a big disappointment. Ha 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 ha. I am a comedian. But thank you. Uh, they lost to Bet Boom in their opening game. A best of three that went all three maps. But still, maps two and three were fairly uh, convincing from Bet Boom. I didn't think big looked that good in that game. They then I, think, beat... I think it's a fair loss. I think Bet Boom can beat pretty much anyone. But yeah. Uh, if, you, if you're big and you're trying to be a proper team you shouldn't lose to Betboom but yeah. they then beat God's Reign <sighs> you know we need that Zidane meme the, whew, you know the <laughs> damn you know when someone posts a women's football highlight like we need that Zidane meme that everyone posts in the comments like god damn how do they manage that they then beat uh, Forza 2-1 
in a series that, well, the second map went to overtime. They almost lost it 2-0, but they pulled it together one nuke convincingly. All right, fair enough. And then they got knocked out by OG. So yep. it's not like the worst run I've ever seen. It could have been a lot worse. But the fact that they don't finish like top two at this event, which is essentially a CCT Cup, slightly better, like a, an elite version of a CCT Cup, essentially. Like, that's really disappointing for Big, who have been rebuilding and trying new things and bringing in new players. And I was told by real analysts that this is the best Big team, like, in years. Oh, my God, they got Searson back. Uh, I kind of didn't buy into it. I uh, just kept my mouth shut. And here we go. Here's why. Because, come on, guys. Really? You couldn't make top two at this event? I'm yeah. kind of disappointed. Yeah, seriously, it's 103 in this event, and you have both JDC and Crimbo above 120. Like, I can't help but put some blame on Searson if I'm looking at this stat sheet. Um, at the very least, when they had Mantu in the previous roster, they uh, Mantu was one of the players who was sort of like doing his job. It was just you thought. I think a lot of people thought, well, Searson can reach higher, um, but based, apparently based on what? Based on what? It's been years. <laughs> yeah, because Mantu was doing fine. But then it was like, well, Searson, if you bring him back, you can speak German, and he can probably reach a slightly higher level than Montu because Montu has a bit of a ceiling. Uh, and then he, so far at least in this event, he he didn't um, at all. Uh, I mean, the close game against a dead Forza team is probably like almost losing two zero to a an absolutely dead Forza team. That's probably the low light of this event. Yes. Losing to OG, that's fair. OG are about to play the final, but. It's not OG even fair. It's, stand in, it's, but whatever. Uh. it's it's not fair, but it's like they're about to play the final. I I can understand it. OG did play slightly better than I would have expected this event, and then uh, but like almost losing two zero to a Forza team that doesn't even exist, <laughs> like they just had to send someone because they had this obligation. <laughs> That's, yeah, they lost to a ghost. <laughs> they, yeah, they lost to no one. Uh, yeah. Uh, bad, bad, bad job from uh, bad job from Big. I, uh, I would like to say my my prediction at the start of the year about them being a good team. Uh, I would like to retract that because they removed Mantu, which made me hate them. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, the removal of Mantu was, I don't know, a bit odd, a bit yeah. odd to me because I I get it. Sisson was good in twenty twenty two, but then it was twenty twenty two. Uh, he's been a alive since then and doing stuff, and it's been pretty horrendous. So I don't see why you, you needed that move. But I guess, I mean, the biggest part of it is just the language thing, right? It's speaking German. But man, is it is it really that much of a buff? Y'all speak such good English. Why bother? Uh, another yeah. team that uh, sucked. Because a lot of teams who came to this event expecting to do something really didn't. Um, was actually Ents. I didn't put it in the notes, but I, I just realized we need to talk about this. Uh, this roster is... Well, ever since Katowice, it's been slowly downhill, just sloping down. And at Katowice, everyone was fully ready to give Glaive so much credit and say, this team, man, they can do stuff with Glaive. Uh, these players, whilst they aren't that great, they're a core that's worked together. and They can actually make some strides. And those strides have been mm, less of uphill and more, yeah, like a cheese race. You know, when you try to catch the cheese down that hill in England. Have you ever seen that? Oh, Chasing seen the cheese. That, yeah. That's basically been Ents since then. Like they're a perfect circle as well, just like the wheel of cheese they're chasing, just like boom, <laughs> boom, 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 boom down this down this hill. Except there's not that many crazy Polish people chasing it down there, hoping that something can be salvaged. Like this, this, this is kind of grim. Losing games to again the dead Forza team and the stand-in OG really doesn't bode well. And oh, is it time to get Glaive out of there? Is the real question. Is it time to smack that eject button? and get Glaive out of there into another project. Uh, yeah, it might be. It's a hard thing to to say. Um, maybe give it time, maybe like, I don't know. I feel like the move was always just like a move for the major. That's what I felt like at the start. They mm. got this slight, this decent nine core and they put it together for the major invite and maybe they could make something happen at that point. They made Katowice playoffs after all. But I did always feel like, the, how is this going to look long term? Like, how can you really rely on Goofy and Kylar to be tier one players forever? <laughs> um, maybe you can, maybe you can't, but like, I didn't, I didn't really see this working out long term. 
Uh, huge bombing out. They, these guys did lose against the Dead Forces team. Uh, yeah. In the opening game, no less. Uh, yeah, yeah, nah. I'll, uh, I I want to see a different ends to some degree. Um, but I would probably, I would honestly, pro- maybe I would, I would probably rather break up the poles than I would uh, put Glaive out of here. I think I would rather just go like lean into the international thing. Because okay. really, if it if it isn't for the major spot, why are well now they did make the major regardless, so they kind of kind of have to keep some core. But like, why uh, why exactly is Goofy here? Because I don't think Goofy is that good of a player. Um, if you yeah. could have anyone in the English speaking tier two market who plays similar position positions, why would you have Goofy? I mean, name name the free agent. Fuck if I know what does he play like supportive roles. Uh, put JKS in here, easy, solved, ship it. <laughs> oh yeah, JKS. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but like, I look at some of this and like, yeah, Goofy, Hades, Kylar, that's a cool core, but that core isn't going to be tier one. Maybe one of them could be on on their own, or two of them could be on their own. Um, why would you do that when you could have an English speaking core that might be even better? Um, they have academy players. Um. Some of them are, come some on. of them are decent. No, but, but I mean, we had the whole like Sprout broke up completely. There's like the whole ev- everyone who's been on ITB in the past half year, someone could probably fit in here. Um, there's definitely you're naming a bunch here. of teams, here, a bunch of players. I do not see a single upgrade. <laughs> I don't know. I just something doesn't sit right with this team. And then also, I think Diha kind of stopped working when they went Polish. Cause he, yeah, he really wasn't that good. Like he was, he had a moment, you know, initially. We thought, okay, this could work with Diha being a, more of a starring role. Yeah, really didn't work out. But I still think if I'm making changes to go international, the core I'm keeping to keep my major spot is Glaive, Diha, and Hades. I'd take that. I'd take that. Not because Kyler's I hate been... Goofy and Kyla, but oh, actually, I kind of don't rate Kyla at this point. It's been too many. Kyla's teams played a great moments. game. He's top rated. I don't care. Uh, um, I, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if if rating was all that mattered, wow. Um, it's it's also just for the spots he plays, he's not good enough. And then that's fair. I guess Goofy. I don't hate him like at all. I, I liked him back as far as Visla Krakow, but I just think if you want to get better, you need to make moves. That being said, as I'm pretty much berated you for, I don't know who the hell those moves are. I don't, but, see, okay. I don't see the moves just lying there, obviously, in nature. Just, oh, just go get him. Like, who the hell can I go get? And I'm going to have to take more risks, really, if I'm rebuilding with Ents and I'm not trying to spend a bunch of money. Neither do I, but this is the season where you can make a lot of different moves. So, yeah, like, config, uh, where you at? Sprout broke down. If you want to, like, do something, like, stay, maybe you want to keep the four man Polish thing, there's Raiko. I, like, he, he would be a half decent pickup. There's a rumor Ecstatic are not going to resign with their team. Um, that was okay. a rumor I saw like two weeks ago or something. And then you might have Kragen or okay. or Paddy if you want to put him in as like a non-IGL. I'm not saying these are like, like, this is definitely going to keep you in the tier one scene. But like, if you've got to do something, there's definitely players out there that you can probably work with. Yeah, if I want to take uh, a risk, I'm not taking a risk on ecstatic players. Uh... <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I don't want I, the only player I want to sign if I'm an org from Ecstatic is Patty, and it's because he's an IGL, a really good one who frags way beyond his role. No one else on that team has ever impressed me for any extended period of time. Like Kragen, for one map at a time, can sometimes look okay. Um, Salazar can have the occasional map. Everyone else is never good, and, and I don't really care for the team. So oh, on the off chance nobody picks them up. SDY or Blame F, would you take them for ends? I'll take SDY without hesitation. Mm-hmm. Blame F, do I want him on my team? Not calling, just fragging. He's objectively very good. I'd take yes. that. If, yes. I, if I'm ends, because I don't see this teammate going anywhere else. Like, there's nowhere else this team is going. Like, config. You, I, config. Config as well. <laughs> I, I'd take config on this. Config over Goofy easily. Is it yeah. a terrible idea that could immensely, intensely backfire? Like really bad? Yes, but it's one of your few options to go be like an actual competitive team. I think. I think if you're innocent at this point, your choice is do nothing or have a small chance of doing something. Like you could might as well make changes. 
So yeah, but take the good risks. Yeah. I'd take I'd take an SDY. I'd take in blame F. I'd take yeah. a risk on someone who's very unproven, who's got crazy numbers. Those players don't really exist right now, but yeah, it's not in the English speaking world. But there's a risk to be taken. All right. Speaking of config and terrible decisions, NIP. <laughs> at this event and i need your judgment because i am obviously not the biggest follower of the swedish counter-strike scene and technically nip still kind of are a part of that they finished fifth to sixth which you is way more impressive than it actually is like the numbers because they won one game (laughs) and that was against the mighty god's reign who not only are god's reign come on guys they also had a standard they didn't even have their full lineup they had yume who I don't. I've never heard of this fella. No offense, mate. You're 17 Dutch. Let's get a show with him. You're a person. Um, you fuck off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like this random guy is standing in. No offense. I'm not expecting much from them. If NIP can only beat them, are we? Are we still? How are we feeling about this project? Like, I need the Swedish take because my take is. Uh, no matter who they sign instead of Blue Phoenix, I'm not convinced. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think the general, the general feeling within the NIP camp as well, from everything they're saying, is also like give it time. Like this event isn't the be all end all, and no event in the next three months is going to be the be all end all. Um, so I think, I think the idea is to give it time. At this point, they they don't have these like superstar expectations that we're going to win straight out of the gate. We're gonna. I think they've said. Um, we want to win in 2025. That's when we expect to like start to look good and be like a cons- consistent. Then why'd you team. sign Alex? Why is the old man on the team? They believe in him, and uh, I don't know if I do. I mean, this is four maps. I can't really judge on four maps. Uh, hey, it's six maps. Just two of them were against bots, but still. Oh yeah, I I, I removed those out of my filter and looking at that, Maxter is good. Um, Res didn't do much this event, and Wrinkle kind of crumble. Wrinkle. Young new guy, he can have an off. He can have an off event. That's fine. He's playing. Uh, this is his home ground, though. This is online versus kind of shit teams. Wrinkle should be smashing them. This is only the event. Lo- he should be dumping people into the fucking bin. But it's only like the fifteenth map he's playing in English. Ever. Does the AWP so. function differently in English? No, but right like right click scopes, uh, left click shoots. Like he's you know how player. this goes. You know how this goes. Like it's Guardian the... made a career not speaking Russian, orping people. Like why is Wrinkle all of a sudden broken because he's speaking English? He had perfectly fine maps before this event. Like not many, yeah. but like he had some fine maps. Why did he suddenly shit the bed? Was it the pressure of having to face the mighty heavy god? Like what are we talking about here? I'm not. I'm, all right. I'm, I'm a bit mm, about this whole thing. I'm not. I'm not gonna say. Like, I don't think Wrinkle is the reason they... Well, he could be the reason they lost this, but I think Rez also didn't do jack shit. Yeah, which Rez is, is like, another thing. <laughs> he should have put a 120 in this event. He should have. He Objective. should be smurfing, yes. Yeah, he should be smurfing in this event. He's... <laughs> you have Aurora players, like, consistently putting up 140 ratings. Like, above 140 ratings. And then Rez is doing nothing. Like, um, Yeah. And he has the tenure. He's played with this core. He's played with this team for longer than anyone else. But he has no excuse to perform like this. Blue Phoenix, I can excuse. Wrinkle, I can excuse. Maxter, he doesn't, doesn't need an doesn't excuse. Doesn't need an excuse, really excuse. Well. the guy's just a yeah, fragger. Yeah. He did really well. Um, and Alex, he gets sort of the IGL pass. Give him time. He's, he's, with time, maybe he can be something. Um, Rez is like the odd one out here for me. Um, so yeah. Mm. Yeah, Rez also not very... Uh... Not very pleased with what I've seen. To be fair, I've been saying that about Res for what feels like uh, five years. It's it's actually stupid for how long Res has been disappointing, yep. <laughs> and he's just still on the team. <laughs> I mean, to have that kind of tenure, as in not ten years in experience, you know, ten years in tenureship, like to be allowed to be so crap and never get traded or like cut, is incredible. I mean, sure, he's been through some dysfunctional times, some dodgy like leadership. But come on, dude! Like, just just look good once, just once. Yeah. Have a series of maps where you look really good, like just more than one. Like, just do it. It's not that hard. Fucking yeah, you. Everyone else can do it. You also look at like pretty much anyone who's left NIP and they're actually looking decent right now. Like someone said, Brolin is doing well. Device started doing well. Hampus to a degree is doing well. 
uh, Alexi B just won a major. Like anyone who's left NIP in the past two years is <laughs> kind of doing well. Um, <laughs> so, and I mean, Pierre's Comte, res... not really, but that's the one exception I think to the. Uh, ah, the it'll come. Rule, it'll yeah. come. I mean, at this point, <laughs> it, it'll come. I promise. Uh, but and Res is just like he just proves the rule by staying in NIP and doing nothing. So. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. It's frustrating. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They building for twenty twenty five to just just make signings that make sense. Then, like, like, if SDY comes in here, then let's see what they do. But (laughs) yeah, yeah. I mean, SDY is a good signing for whoever gets him at this point, in my opinion. Yep. I just Res is just winding me up. Right. Yep. We've been at this for too long. Let's move on to the ever-recurring, everlasting, and always frustrating Eternal Shuffle. <laughs> Let's see what teams have fucked up now. OG, we kind of mentioned they were playing with a stand-in. That's because Regali has been benched. Uh, free to explore his options. I'm, I'm not sure what the actual situation is there. Is there a contract thing, or is it just a benching? I think he is contracted still. He's just benched. Uh... I don't know what the actual deal with this was. Um, okay, because he's he's a player I want to see on other teams. He's a player I want to see, like on teams with potential. I yeah. thought it was going to be him and Heavy God leaving fairly soon. Uh, the fact that he's the first one to be benched actually is a bit weird to me because I thought Heavy God definitely be the one with the most interest and the most teams trying to actually throw money at. Uh, well, not him, OG for him. Uh, but instead, it's Regali the first to bench. Oh, he's a solid enough Orpa on most maps on most sides. I don't see him as actually, in terms of skills, being that much worse than a Broki or a Torshi. It's just, yeah, he's had some problems with his attitude and his decision making, I think, in the past, like towards himself and his role. And the, yeah, there's some things that could be polished up in his game, but there's no denying the talent. So I hope he gets picked up and I hope he can, uh, he can make things happen. I mean, he speaks Danish, so he's got options. He's an excellent like international team player, I think. Yeah, he He's speaks English, like speaks Danish. There's some teams that could do with an Orpa. Uh, sure, it wouldn't be the like most flashy move to see him end up on someone like Prezi. Uh, well, not not this current Prezi roster, the ex Prezi roster, uh, if you know who I mean. Should be this. We didn't put this in the notes, but now that you mention it, they should be signed by Gaimin Glad- Gladiators. Should be announced today. Okay, cool. Um, so that was the rumor, and they are announcing something today. So if they announce that. Hopefully they can also go, hey, why don't we have an Orpa? Like a real Orpa. Uh, yeah, why, instead why of Chris Du, you mean? Uh, Chris Du, Refresh, I don't care. Either one. Cut one. <laughs> I don't care. I don't, I don't like either one particularly. Um, I still think Altex, Roy, and TMB are the core to keep. And honestly, actually, I'd keep Chris Du over Refresh from the games I've seen. But uh, that's not really the, the point here. Yeah, OG, cut Regali, bench Regali. He's free to go find a team. Hopefully it's this guy in Gladiators roster. I think it'd be a, a decent fit. But there's definitely better teams who could do with him. Um, yeah. Young Ninjas add Antivirus to their roster. <laughs> Ex-Kaprisky. It, yes. It's just... I'm going to call him Antivirus. Honestly, I had never heard of this person. Still not sure who he is. Can you explain it? Because I, I don't get it. I just put it in because uh, this is the kid that Blame F put as his bold prediction in the top 20 list this year and just went, I played a couple of FPL games with this guy and he's really cracked. Um, and then, what, four months later he's on Young Ninjas. Uh, mm. Replacing Maxter, the outgoing player, of course. Uh, there's not a lot more to say about him, really. He's virtually unknown. He hasn't ever played for anyone you would really... Uh, yeah. I think, much like... Much like literally anyone in uh, Poland, he has played a couple of maps for your token Polish teams, Los Kogutos, uh, Permitta, and PGE Turov. Uh, never officially. Uh, there was something about like a contract thing with Permitta. There was something about that, uh, but whatever the fuck. He, like, much, like I said, like everyone in Poland, he has played for those teams at some point. Yeah. But now he's here for Young Ninjas. He played one series for them before it was announced, which was the quarterfinal loss against 3D Max in the A1 Gaming League. Uh, welcome to the Tier 2 hour, everyone. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, the A1 Gaming League. Oh. It's going to be it's gonna be cool. I, I just put him in here because he was kind of, like, he. people started talking about him slightely when Blame F's thing came around and it was like, never seen this kid, but now, he, now no. he's here. Yeah. Yeah, literally never heard of him. 
Uh, he pops up. Cool. Let's see how he does. Yep. Young Ninjas famously have had good players in the past on their academy roster. And famously, Ninjas in pajamas haven't done anything with them. Uh, until Maxter, basically the first real uh, signing they've made. Outside of like the Lena ZTR stand-in era, which was so cringe. Uh, which is insane to me. Because I remember when when the current Metasport team like left for Metasport. Uh, and Era left for... Uh, Godsent and Linus left for Zangle and Maxter was left over and I was like I like sort of on the face of it I was feeling like out of that five man roster Era, Linus, Nilo, Adam B and Maxter I sort of felt like Maxter was like maybe the second worst player on the team and then he immediately comes out and is like fucking great so mm. um and also and now he's that up stand in the instant team. with the main team that was so impressive. Yeah. And you wondered why they didn't just promote him. But hey, instead we faffed yeah. around and then finally did it once the team was terrible. So yeah. NIP everybody. Um, <laughs> and that kind of rounds up the, the shuffle. There wasn't much shuffling going on this week. So yeah, most teams have kept it in their pants and haven't fucked everything up this week. That's very nice. Yeah. Uh, so next, we have, of course, Prospect of the Week. Our evergreen little uh, segment. And I've picked a player who is 20 years old, plays for OG, and isn't very heavy. That's Nexius. <laughs> He's actually had quite a good stint so far in this team. Uh, he came out of... He's a Mouser XT alum, isn't he? And he uh, he didn't do that much. He wasn't too impressive initially. Especially not on Mouser XT. Like, he was fine. Like, that Nexius Chrism roster had some decent runs. Uh, but he wasn't that crazy. OG sign him, I think, okay. Take a risk, take a shot in the dark. And it didn't look too promising. He had the occasional map. He plays, you know, very aggressive, like, entry roles. I thought maybe, you know, as a support he can develop. This event, he showed out. He's still taking that high level of opening attempts. But he's actually winning them a lot more now. And they're clearly doing something right. He's fragging out. His skills are on full display. This is a great week to pick him. I think he's had a really good showing. Yeah. Uh, he's a good player. Um, probably on that NXT team he was on, I probably wouldn't have picked him out to be like the one guy that would go no. on to be a good player. But he's he's done well on OG. I didn't expect him to do this well on OG. I thought that he sort of took in. I can't remember who he replaced. He would have replaced. Um, fuck. I uh, whatever whatever whoever he replaced. I remember thinking that he's going to take the supportive positions, but he's. Uh, Pretty consistently put up good numbers in like each of the events that OG have played. Uh, yeah, he would have been the fasher replacement. Yeah, well, to be honest, there's no point, I think, looking exactly role for role in that sense because the cutting fasher, bring someone else in, this little like stint thing they did, it was also about rejigging roles and making things make more sense because OG yeah, was mean, a bit of a mess in terms of the build. Nexus and Heavy God coming in to replace Fasher and Nexa. Like that's uh yeah, and then they put up basically the inverse numbers of what those two those players did. Um he's putting up a good job. I'll I'll just there's not a lot more to say than uh, about about him than that. Uh, I haven't watched him. I'll be honest, I haven't watched a single one of these guy esports maps because I don't know, once it was moved off LAN and all of the half decent teams pulled out. Um the it most was tough to give a shit, wasn't it? Like the most exciting thing about this event was the drama about why it <laughs> why why it ended up like this in the first place. Um, so. Yeah, just because of the timing of the uh, Chengdu games, I was able to catch some maps. Because yeah. Chengdu half the time was done by 11.30, so what else am I going to yeah. do with my day? Like, Be productive? No, I've got a Counter-Strike to watch. So. <laughs> yeah, it's always Counter-Strike always kind of to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, good pick, good pick. It's, it's going to be cool to see, like, uh, maybe he... OG, I guess this might just be because Flamesy did it, but like it's sort of like the half step into tier one, which you play there on a year, and if you put up good numbers, someone is probably gonna pick you up. And then you sort of get like the tier one adjacent experience before you move into a real team. Um yeah. Flamesy did it, and I think Regali could do it, I think Heavy God could do it, and I think Nexius could probably do it. So let's see what happens with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a good start. It's a good start, especially for a guy playing roles. Like, mm. I was quite impressed. Um, yeah. yeah, who have you taken? Because that's a name not many people have been familiar with. Uh, I've been. I picked this sort of on a hunch, looking at stats sheet, and now I'm looking closer. I think maybe it would have been more appropriate to pick one of the other guys on this team. But I might just mention the team broadly because I think all of them are pretty uh, pretty young. Um, we had Namiga, the Belarusian team, showing up in um, Chengdu, 
And the player I did put down was Flamus. He was one of the top players on the stats sheet. But looking at that, he's sort of inflated because of the Steel Helmet was series. So I'm probably going to pick Risky Bob instead. <laughs> okay. Uh, this entire team, they're all like 21, I think. I think they're all like 20, between 19 and 21. Maybe there's a 22-year-old hidden somewhere in here. Uh, Flamus, Risky Bob, and Khan, they played like one good game each. Uh, Flamus' good game was against Steel Helmet. But um, Khan had a very good map against in the opening game against uh, FaZe. It was the best of one, so it was just the one map. And then the, the probably like the showdown game for them in this event was FlyQuest, the FlyQuest game. Where uh, Risky Bob was the guy who sort of show, uh, really showed up. Uh, like overtime, twice against FlyQuest. I mean, this is... What I think is impressive about this is that I think for all of these players, it's like their it's definitely their debut big event, but I think for most of them it might even be like their big their debut LAN period, like like in any sort of meaningful capacity. Like uh, these guys are all new players. Namiga yeah. sort of came out of they came out of nowhere with this random roster signing, <coughs> and uh, they're putting up pretty good numbers for like complete newbies, which is uh, very cool to see. Um, yeah, unfortunately, so, sorry. Yeah. No. I'm I'm just broadly gonna mention all of them <laughs> to a degree. Okay. Um, yes, I have just checked. They did basically never played anything outside of Russia because it's just like Perry events and then Chengdu. Um, yeah. So I'm just broadly gonna mention like a couple of them: Risky Bob, Khan, and Flamus, uh, because it's impressive to do this the first time you're like traveling internationally for a big LAN and play teams like Face like. You you get squared up against FaZe in your first game, and you actually play a good game. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna g good on all of them. Uh, good on the whole team. And, yeah, having uh, seen their results, they clearly played a solid level. I was gonna say though, this is unfortunately a team that played too early most of the time for me to ever see them. Uh, yeah, oh, it was I didn't impossible watch to watch these games. Uh, so yeah. no, Khan is a player I actually picked in another episode. Uh, as another Kazakh Orpa after like I yep. picked him like two weeks after picking Icy and it was kind of funny but the uh, yeah these guys Flamus especially got a bit of talking like a bit of hype on the Twitter spaces uh, Risky Bob not so much but certainly deserves credit as much as the other guys do considering what he's actually done this could be another promising roster uh, that it feels endless the number of CIS Russian speaking just teams that just crop up with players that you always think oh maybe they can do something as well and if these guys are all this young like yeah their, I did their check. average team age is 20.8 they're very young if they their stick oldest together, player is Lear and he's 22 the youngest is Flamus and he's 19 so yeah yeah they can stick together see this is a team that you build to develop and then get, play well in 2025 you see how they're all young and it makes sense and one of them you haven't been sat on for five years hoping to magically become good this is how you take a risk and uh, name eager they don't have to pay these guys very much they can sign to three-year contracts and just wait the fact that this is their debut land and they do you know not diddly squat they don't get upset by the chinese teams they do show a good level against phase hmm. yeah very promising so I get why you want to pick three, though, because there wasn't much to give like a single guy too much credit for. Yeah. Each one had their series. Each one deserves a bit of a, a bit of a nod. So, no, that's pretty cool. Fair enough. Yeah, cool team. Uh, they're also coached by Box, who is one of those Nemiga mainstay players. Uh, oh, yeah, from the old team. Yeah. Yeah, from the time when they would have qualified for a major, but uh, it, there was no major. Uh, so they just got stickers. Um, yeah, rip in peace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, cool team, cool team. All right, well that pretty much wraps it up. There's not that much else going on. It wasn't. It was a busy week in terms of those two big events, but usually we have a lot more nonsense going on in the background. You know, uh, silly trades, moves, controversies. Wasn't that much this week. Controversy three. So I guess no European Pro League games is essentially uh, <laughs> <laughs> what week we had. Uh, no one just randomly accused of cheating and no other bollocks. Uh, so yeah, pretty quiet episode. But no, we're going to be uh, settling in now in 10 minutes to go watch that grand final mm. and uploading this episode. So thank you for joining me. As always, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check out membership if you want to be a part of the monthly Q&A. Check out Quack's uh, stuff that he does on his Twitch as well as the links to the Face It Hub Discord. I can't remember which duck, one I'm going to put in the description. And cover. One of them for Duck and Cover. Uh, the <laughs> very fun, casual, no screaming, raging level 10s. Uh, amateur pro league type thing it's going to be interesting uh, we'll see if i'll join we'll see maybe with a <laughs> enough to drink i'll i'll come in 
piss off some yeah. level tens. Like, is this is this the lineup? Just throw a flag. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's goddamn those tryhards annoy me. And Perfect. yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>